What's up, guys? Pittsburgh Weishworth back again. Carmen here. I'm joined with Andy. Um, we're going to run through a oldie but a goodie, a JP deck uh, that you probably haven't seen in a long time, Vivid Strike. So, sort of like the how one we... with the, the one with the lollies beating each other up. Yeah, my favorite... That's why I'm here. <laughs> my favorite Magical Girl MMA uh, show. <laughs> um, but, so, the story with Vivid Strike... Uh, sort of a preface here before we get into the list. Uh, it was a really popular deck way back when, and they ran the eight-bar builds, like the Fuka combo. And the reason that deck kind of fell off and you can't really play it anymore is because it was an early play. It would come out, it would get a bunch of markers, it would put your opponent on the clock, but there are too, there's too much anti-change widely available that, like, hard removes cards. So, like, you can't put your opponent on a clock with Fuka anymore. You used to, like, ping a bunch. You used to pay out all your markers. Because people have too many ways to remove it. So, sort of in the same way that we did, Andy did with Project Diva, where he was updating uh, Soundless Voice to sort of work in a more modern meta. I've sort of went in with Vivid Strike when I was in Japan, picked up a bunch of cards, trying to brew lists that would work in a more modern envi environment. You could at least have fun with playing at Locals. So, so I, I guess you could call it, like, the meta build, or, like, it's not, like, an S-tier set. It's never going to be, like, a top-tier set, but this is, like, the most refined build you can have with the set if you want to play it, right? Yeah, like, if you want to bring it to locals and you want to stand a chance against maybe the random, like, really good deck that somebody's playing in, like, a mixed format or whatever, this deck can actually keep up. And that's always the goal. The best way to play Vivid Strike. Yeah, so getting right into it. Um, we're going to start with our field plusing zero here. So this is our Vivio free runner, And then on play, mill two. If there's a climax, you get to mill the top card of your opponent's deck and put a card from their waiting room on top of their deck. Um, so that seems kind of like garbage, but if your opponent's like a salvage deck, you can use it to snipe cards that they may want to salvage on their next turn, um, screw, put throw cards into their clock uh, that they won't be able to get out, like at between level like two and three and stuff like that and it also gives us some much needed deck speed older sets like some of their biggest problems is they don't have the deck speed and deck manipulation that newer decks have um so this kind of helps us keep up throughout the game and it's just a free runner free runners are good so free, free runner, I, I like that it stays relevant throughout the game too because like that first effect is pretty sacky mm -hmm. because if, if you mill a climax and then you can like, send their top card or whatever you could end up hitting a climax off the top of their deck too. You can randomly just, you know, yeah, randomly push damage, too, which makes it even good late game. So like, if you just have an extra salvage, you can just take this back and maybe get lucky. Yeah, like the big thing is that I don't, I don't even think at the end of the day, you really care what the effect is when you hit a climax. You just want the mill. The self mill is really good for these old decks because you don't have a lot of access to it. Um, all right, so moving into... You made it sound like it was yeah. going to be, like, a, a horror story. This is, like... That was a pretty good Yeah, no, it's... it's These are fine. Um, all right, moving into our next card. We got the Rene uh, Clean Cut uh, from the Trial Deck. I have the SP art on here because I couldn't find a good scan of the uh, main art without, like, bad watermarks and crap. So this is what we got. Um, so, yeah, normal Clean Cut, 2,500 vanilla Clean Cut. It's That's actually fine. It's actually enough. You snipe somebody's... Uh, support card and go and like obviously like i'll spoil the next card we're running a bunch of ricky so we can make really aggressive early plays um sort of have really safe going into level one turns with this so 2500 clean cut but it's it's fine i mean what like grisaia has 2500 clean cut some decks play that that's a new set so yeah i know fine. a lot of sets will still have these 2500 ones usually the 2500s are the ones with no restriction you can just pick any character yeah, you can just melee. Everything's melee. What a good game. Um, but yeah, it's also our blue fix. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, boomer. Damn. All right, next card. So this is Ricky, Fuka Ricky. Um, this is true Ricky. Search your library for a level one or lower character on play. And then during your turn, it's a 2,500. So pretty good. We play four of it because we don't have like big oversizes and stuff like that. So oh, we're going we're gonna to plus the, the by paying and get into our level 1 combo that way. And 2500 is like vanilla stats these days, so that's fine. Uh, also, jail art. Uh, but, you know, that's the whole set. You're playing Vivid Strike. You signed up for this. You did. Alright, simple card. 
Another simple card. Uh, Sulfur Salvage Brainstorm. Uh, we run this one and not the uh, the Super Jail card, the bar filter one, because we're not running 8 bar, eight bar anymore. And we also need to fix for red for our top end and some level 1 utility cards. So we're going to choose this Brainstorm instead. Also, the act ability is relevant. Uh, so every time you brainstorm or use a backup, you're getting an additional 500 power somewhere on your board. It can help you edge out lanes, especially because our level 1 needs reverse. Um, this salvage is a, this is a pretty backup-heavy deck, right? Uh, we run two. A good as, bit? Yeah, two okay. or three. Um, but just kind of, you know, we need the red fix somewhere. self rest Salvage is pretty good. So easy choice. Mm -hmm. All right, so here's a more techie card. So this Rene, it's on play, top check filter for any character. And then it also has, when it dies, so when it goes to the waiting room, so either play over it or put into the waiting room after it's become reversed, um, discard any card from your hand, uh, so that's kind of like a double filter in a way, and then you can summon the 1-0 Rene, which I'll jump to here, which is a 1065 to the field. Um, so notably, our deck's pretty low on blue, so playing a level 1 blue card seems a little weird, but the fact that this summons without color identity uh, can help you get a big card onto the field early at level 0, and then it's 6-5 cross turns so that you can shroud that with backups, and it helps provide some much-needed blue fix to the deck. And the double filter is pretty nice. And the filter could be nice because you're on gold bar. Yeah. And you can always, like, side attack with this, too. So you get your uh, big character going into your turn when they run it over. Rather yep. than, like, having the big character come in on your turn and then, then just hitting back over it. Yeah, you can always side and let them run over this. Or side it on your turn and give you a free plus. So... And you can always ditch the 1-0 from your hand and then have it be summoned, because that's how these effects work. So if you have the 1-0 in your hand and this on the field, you can summon it like that. Interesting. All right, so getting into our level 1. Um, this, it's a, this Reinhardt's just on reverse. It's Shibakaze. On play goes to six play, 6k. Climax combo with a bar on reverse search. Um, pretty boring, but... Uh, this is the only good level one plus in combo in the set, so we play it. And gold bar is a pretty, pretty good trigger. It's pretty vanilla. H have this been like a different character each time? Or any of their, these girls been the same? Um, not so far actually. Just the Rene. We've seen Rene twice, the white haired girl. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. Einhard is new. Um, but yeah, uh. Really basic. Pretty, pretty vanilla. I mean, Chima causes. Can't really go wrong with those. It's off gold bar, too, so that's kind of And, like, nice. it's it's JP format. People just give up free reverses. It's not like English. So a 7k Chima Kaze is, like, fine. Not great. Uh, you can, like, throw it over with some support cards, but 7k is okay, and it's on a 7k trigger. gets there, and it's off gold bar, so you're going to, like, get your climax combo pretty consistently, too. I like it when level 1s are off of gold bar. Yeah, they let you, you really mulligan. To, you don't really have to stretch to get them. You don't have to mulligan as hard for your climax to mm -hmm. uh, get into it. All right, so moving on. Uh, so I can't say the name of this character because our video might get taken down. Um, but she is a uh, level one bomb and then on play ditch a climax salvage. So it's just silica. Uh, pretty, pretty good profile, especially when you're running gold bar. Uh, we are green red at level one so it shouldn't be too hard to hit this is more of an out when you're flooded um and staying a bomb keeps it relevant against decks that maybe wall up at level one just gives you some more uh, <laughs> utility i just looked this up yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Hey, we can. magic the gathering is having like a similar thing right now <laughs> where one of they're doing like a godzilla pr like promotional thing with their mm -hmm. new set and I did see that. There's a character in Godzilla that has that name that can't be said. <laughs> and Wizards already printed the cards. <laughs> That's very funny. And so, like, the, the ones with that name are going for, like, hundreds of dollars. Yeah, it's just the YouTube... Uh, the YouTube algorithm doesn't like when you say that word right now, so we're just gonna not do it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> pretty good profile to have in a deck with Gold Bar. Um, if you get flooded, it's a good way to filter them out, and bombs help you know, keep up against Big Wolf. Pretty good card. Uh, next card, hella simple. Fucking 2k backup. You play it. Um, if you don't like some of the other cards on the list, you can always up this, because we have the act support. Um, running extra 2k backups is fine. 
Uh, we're going to mostly use these to shroud our next card, which is the Rene we talked about. It's a 6500, can attack characters of a higher level. Um, this is sort of the way we win on our opponent's turn. Uh, 6500 is pretty good. If we get that out at level 0, it's like kind of the nut play. Um, but getting this out at 1 is also fine. And it's, of course, the Rene, the level 0 Rene is also helping you filter your hand. So it's fine. The drawback is not great, um, but you're usually going to have a lane that you can snipe with this, even in late game. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Think of you it more as a free 6 card to uh, protect yourself from getting arrested when the cops show up. Yeah. That's what's cause... happening in the card. You're getting arrested for playing this set. So by having well, this, this is... card, it's like the reverse card in Uno. Well, when they fight, Andy, they age up. That's what? the mechanic, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is so, that why the the hot yeah. name make you looking girl in the first in the level one combo? Looks yeah. So... so this is Renee's aged up version. Um, they age up when they fight. Okay. Yeah. Um, the not oh, talking about the last card because she has like a police badge looking thing. That's why I say. Yeah, that's why true. He does that's have a arrest. police badge. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so next card, moving into level two. So the first effect on next the climax combo, that's flavor text. We don't care about that. This is just a uh, anti-early play clock bomb. Uh, we run one of it. We're in green pretty heavily, so no issue for having to play this. Um, good way to remove things from the board completely, especially because our next card... What's, the, is, what's the first effect on there that's flavor text? Oh, it's just like some sort of on reverse combo. Climax combo. Oh, oh, you just don't run the combo. Yeah, we don't run the combo. Gotcha. It's just flavor text. And it's important to have this as an option to deal with early plays because our anti change is a really steep cost, which is our next card. So it's a 2 2 1 pay 2 sack a character anti change, and it just goes to waiting room. Um, that's like really, really steep for anti change, but anti change counters are really good in general, and sack counter might save you uh, in some on reverse combo finisher matchups. So. We run it. At least you get a. At least you get a sack a character with that one. I mean, I think that's like the general cost for uh, anti change, though. Yeah, I just think that the like pay three overall sack a character is like really steep. Um, it is. I mean, it's not good, but this is just like the. I think it's like the general profile they give. Yeah, either this or ditch two is usually what they go for, but is what it is. We run it. Threatening anti change is pretty good. Um. Yes. I mean, hey, you can always just use it as a 2,500 backup, too. People That's forget true. that. All right, next card. Also a backup. So we got Scuderia. This is Rene's Wish. Um, you play this counter. Um, choose one of your Rene characters and sack it. Uh, which is any of the white hair girl characters. Um, and you heal the top card of your clock to hand and then send this card to memory. So literally Sayaka's Wish, but for Rene. Um, we it's run th really good. How many yeah, grenades do you run? A lot. So six at level zero, three at level one. Uh, the uh, the anti change bomb, <laughs> anti change counter technically, I believe, has Rene in the name. Uh, it might be wrong. Um, I don't think it does actually. And then we have three early play Rene's, which we'll get into next. So very large amount. Um, so we can pull this off a lot. Uh, in fact, you could, might be able to run this all the way up to four. Um, if you don't like one of the other cards in the list, you can easily cut this and run this at additional count. Uh, this is one of the reasons that we splash into blue, because we can't play Fuka anymore. So we can't play early play Fuka and get a bunch of markers and, like, put our opponent on, like, a two or three turn clock with, like, multiple Fukas anymore, because, like, the card just doesn't function in the current meta. So this is kind of how we're going to elongate the game and make sure that we can set up our finisher by, like, abusing Renee's Wish. It's a good defensive card, too, because it's also a sack counter, so you can mess up your opponent's reverses, or... Yep. Sometimes the cost isn't even a cost. Like, if they reverse your... If they're going to kill your character anyway, sacrificing it's not a... Not a big not deal a big at deal. all. It's already going to go to waiting room. So, yeah. yeah, this is sort of how we fill the gap here, going into level 3. Speaking of, I guess we're talking about this. This is technically level 2. Two of your climaxes early play for this Rene for each of your other back row characters. This gains a thousand power, so it's going to sit at 11k more often than not. And it's a healer. So, really basic early play profile. Um, but it helps elongate the level two game. Uh, and as well as sits big on your opponent's turn. It's a good thing to protect with like your 2k backups and stuff. Um, with the axe supports, like it's going to what, like 13.5 or whatever on defense? That's pretty good. Pretty big, yeah. But, yeah, it's also a Rene. 
like we said, good with Scuderia. Um, decent early play condition. Harder to hit in this deck because you don't have the deck manipulation that other decks do, where like two or less is like basically free. Um, so you have to have a little bit more planning uh, when you're playing this early play, but it's still good, still a healer, still sits big, so good inclusion. Yep. Early play healers. That's where it's at. Pretty simple, especially in the JP meta. These are these are a lot better in the JP meta than in English, I think, in general. So. And it's a Renee, so you can use it with the card before. So. Yep. All right, next. So we got this Einhard. This is our off finisher. So for each of you other, how I don't even want to try to say this. So this is like their fighting guild or whatever, their gym. Um, so this is going to get an additional 500 power for everything except your Renee characters. So all the Renee characters won't hit on this but everything else will oh is she from is she from globo gym yeah she, she's from the renee's from the other one oh dang. um uh but this is top check three add one on play so it helps us get into our finisher climax because our uh finisher is a heal finisher doesn't draw cards on play so this is just a way to get into our uh finisher climax so we don't have it yet and then it also is a on reverse ditch two clock kick um so a lot of utility on one card um, the extra it's power really nice get in the yeah it has a lot of extra utility we're already in green anyway so it doesn't really matter uh, easy helps, one of them helps you draw into your finisher climax and clock kicking's great too because it's guaranteed yeah I could easily see someone running this at 2 or higher as well in this list so again you, you... mentioned you mentioned my Miku deck earlier that's literally what I do in that deck is I just run four co there's like they have a card like this and I just run four copies of it and that's my top end. Yeah, instead. Well thankfully in this deck, moving on to our you final You have an card. actual finisher though too here. Yeah, so here's our Vivio. This is our finisher. So this is another reason we run the act support in the deck. So it's on play it's heal. When you act this gains five hundred times the number of your other melee characters. So it will jump to eleven. Um and then it has a climax combo with a gate or door or whatever when you call it. Um, so it gains 1,500 power and the following ability until the end of your opponent's next turn. When the character opposite this attacks, note that it does not matter what type of attack they do. They side, front, doesn't matter. Um, they take one damage before they even trigger. So the second they declare an attack, whether it's front or side, they take one. Um, so it's sort of just like a burn one, like in reverse. Uh, and then you also have defensive power with your backups and stuff like that. So this, this card will jump to... Usually 13-5, just like your Renes, your whole board will like jump to 13-5 is usually how this works on your opponent's turn. So you're like walling out your opponent and also punishing your opponent for attacking, which they have to do anyway to win the game. And it heals. So like you're running a more sustained uh, top end. Um, yeah, because you kind of heal down to level 3, and then because the climax combo is free, you still have all your stock left over from the turn before. So yeah, if and you need to two-turn them, you can. And you're, it forces your opponent from, like, if they're at 3-5, they can't clock or stuff like that. Or, like, for every one you play, you stop your opponent from clocking from one one more card. Because um, mm -hmm. it makes them unable to have their full attacks. Because the second they attack, before they even trigger, they're going to burn one. So, unless they have some way to, like, put a climax on top of their deck to ensure that they'll cancel, going into their attacks, you're, you know, removing that option from your opponent. I really, really like that it's free. Yeah, that's the big you, thing. Lets you be really aggressive with your early playing the Renes at level, at level two, and then still having enough stock to get a good combo. Yeah, if this game. if this deck had a stock crunch um, with this finisher, I don't think it would be playable at all anymore. But the fact that it's free helps this deck keep up. And it's like what it's going to sit ten five, jump to twelve five when you use an act, and on before you even apply backup power or back row act power. So this can get really, really big on your opponent's turn. And um, yep, there, yeah. on act power uh, is always really tricky because it forces your opponent to attack in strange ways to play around it. Um, because they also don't forces to... them to do math. Yeah, forcing your a opponent lot of times to do math. when you force them to do math, they just will say, uh, "I'm just not going to do the math. I'll just attack it and see what happens." <laughs> <laughs> That's the that's like the in person mind game, you know. Yeah, that's the galactic brain. People are lazy. You can get them. But yeah, it's perfectly serviceable finisher. Um, that's not bad at all. And I think the other thing, maybe making this, I I like about your build is that you have, I like the climax split split bars and gates. Yeah, getting into that. A lot of older sets do to keep relevant. I know Madoka does that. 
in English. Yeah, just, they had just just having like two plusing triggers, like yeah, eight plusing triggers is a good way really to helps. ensure that you'll have the selectivity and like card advantage that you need throughout the game, even if your set is older. Bargate goes a long way in this deck, and we have the filtering and uh, you know selective salvage and stuff like that to ensure that we can take advantage of it. It's just a really versatile climax lineup too. Yeah. Because if you want to push damage, you can try to get the bars, like trigger bars, and get them in your hand. And gates help you keep up your hand size for the longer games, too. And get the right pieces you need going into the end game. Yeah, absolutely. Really so solid. Looking at the whole list overall, uh, it's pretty lean. Our only one ofs are like our anti change here and like the Einhard. Um, there is space here for you to mess around. Like, if you don't really like the Rene level one package, you can probably run more zeros if you don't like being as lean on zeros or squeeze some stuff in there, maybe run some more anti-change, run more Scuderia, um, th run more Einhard, uh, off finisher. There's some room to play around with the counts, um, but for this list, especially for the deck tech, just wanted to show sort of everything that I've been toying with and sort of bringing this into a playable state. Um, but as you can see, it's a lot of, you know, consistency, duplication. We're an older set. We can't exactly afford to run a bunch of one-ofs and stuff like that because we don't have the access that newer sets do. So they're always going to look kind of like this. Not as spicy. I guess, uh, you don't really need red until level 3 either. I mean, I guess you have that level 1. Uh, yeah. More of a filter. But, um... Yeah, I mean, if you wanted to make it the color more consistent, you could probably just run more of the, uh... What, the early... The 1-0 the Rene that you early play off the 0. Yeah, just an additional yeah. count. Yeah, just run four of that. And maybe an additional Rene filter as well. But yeah, uh, pretty simple in terms of counts and stuff like that. Nothing too spicy here. Uh, we went over it as we went, but sort of the basic strategy. Level zero, you're going to run out your runners. If you're going first, if you're going second, you're probably going to prefer to play the clean cut into your opponent's ability cards. You're going to use Ricky to get into your level 1, and then your Rene, you're going to try to, like, sack into your 1-0 at level 0 if you can. Otherwise, you know, you side with it, your opponent goes into level 1, and you have a free 6-5 on the board after you filter your can. Other than that, at level 1, you're just going to play out your Einhards, get reverses where you can with your bar combo, leading into your level 2. At level 2, you're going to play as many Rene's as you can. Get some uh, nice Scuderia value. Is it level 2 before you refresh? You might be able to get some good... because. Uh, the big thing about Saika's Wish profile is that they go even on compression um, because you pay one and then this card goes to memory. So you could, it helps you compress your next deck uh, you know, going into your opponent's attacks and stuff like that. And then you as can well, even do it on your turn if you need to. Like If you have a Climax in the top of your stock and you want to pay it out, you can yeah, do it on your turn. Absolutely. And it'll go to hand. You can play it that turn if you need to push damage. Mm -hmm. And then of course we're going to deal with our opponent's early plays with our uh, anti-change tech. Going into our finisher, if we don't have the gate, um, you're going to have to probably hold your gate over refresh because you're an old set, and that's just kind of how it's going to work, but going into level 3, but if you don't have it yet, we're going to play Ironheart and try to Hail Mary into it, and then we're going to play down as many Vivias as we can. Even if we don't Climax combo, playing out Vivia is pretty good because she's a healer. We hold back down to 3-0 and then use our backups to control the board going into our opponent's endgame turn since Vivio gets massive. Um, but yeah, that's sort of the basic strategy. Seems like a really cool deck. I, I feel like if this deck were in English, it would be like a really solid, like... Yeah, it'd be like a lot more deck, playable, you know? yeah. It, 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 would, it would hurt a lot for the level 1, especially going into the new meta, but yeah, it's definitely playable. Yeah, as someone who plays mostly English, you, you said this set was kind of outdated, but it seems like right up there with everything else. Yeah, definitely when yeah. compared to. The level 1's the weak point here, but in JP it's not as big of a deal. It's pretty beefy, you know? Like, as long as you're not playing against, like, super huge standby decks, you should be winning at level 1. They're running yeah. normal size level 1's. True. Alright, so wrapping it up here, like I say at the end of every video now, uh, I try to throw the slide on all of our videos. Um, because Tell them again, Carmen. People come to YouTube, and they find a lot of waste resources, but they might not know where to go outside of YouTube, so that's Change why the slide is here. Change my fucking Twitter handle, you keep forgetting. <laughs> what is it now? Here, let me... Yeah, figure it, it out. Well, well, I run through the other stuff. So the... I can't edit it, it's just at Sayaka's wish. Like okay. the card in this deck profile. Alright. 
It's like I planned it. Got there. All right, so we got the two Discords, the Card Games Discord and the Competitive White Schwartz Discord, especially since we can't all leave our houses. These are more important than ever. If you want to get some webcam games or decks or games on Tabletop Simulator, these are the places to go, as well as talk more in depth about the meta and link up with other people in the Weiss community. Uh, most discussion happens on Discord. Uh, if you're looking to buy cards, sell cards, all sorts of stuff, the Facebook groups are where you want to go. Um, NA community is pretty much completely a buy-sell trade group, but the global community discussion does happen as well as cards of the day get posted there for English and Japanese. They're translated. And then, of course, we have all our Twitters down at the bottom with Andy's new Twitter handle, as he uh, has corrected me. Um, I tweet about Weiss, like, fairly often. Um, I don't know about everybody else, but we have all of our recurring cast Twitters down there, so give us a follow if you're interested. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, upcoming content, what do we have? We got a... Uh, you Bang said Dream. We have the Bang Dream thing coming up. The uh, yeah, Volume Two. That review. We're gonna do Volume Two pre-review. Um, gonna get that out there as soon as we can. We think that that's that's like really important for uh, English meta because Bang Dream will like actually be a good set instead of just being a cheap set. Um, so I wouldn't call Bang Dream a cheap set anymore. Maybe you know, not. Yeah. <laughs> talking about a like global Facebook group, you know. Yeah, it's true. You need, you need your Christmas costumes. You know, get ready to beg. <laughs> That's where you go to beg for your Christmas costumes. The glo- Facebook groups. <laughs> yeah. Like. Yeah, I guess that's true. Christmas costume is so expensive now. <laughs> willing yeah. to trade. Willing to trade my. <laughs> my left kidney. My, my kidney for a place set of toilets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> toilet too. Toilets. <laughs> oh, and if you want to talk about toilet getting expensive, buying Dream Volume 2 is a really good reason. So we'll be sure to get into that. Um, other than that, I think we're going to try to take advantage of Tabletop Simulator, letting you like sort of view both players' hand and do some like live commentary videos. Um, I think that would be pretty interesting. Uh, we haven't done like game co- play commentary in a long time, mostly because like we had a bunch of it planned, and then all of our shops shut down, so <laughs> we haven't had a chance to actually record any gameplay. Um, came at a pretty bad time, but we'll, we'll, we're going to try to rally and make use of that and get we'll something. We'll make it do with tabletop guys. simulator. Yeah, it's uh, it's not the greatest, but there are a lot of tools out there. If you're interested in playing on tabletop simulator, there are a lot of resources. ENTCG has a video. Three Six Cancel has a video. Uh, I, I think everyone at this point has a video on Tabletop Simulator, except us. <laughs> um, so I'll link those down in the description um, if for all of you guys in need of some Weiss out there. But yeah, I think that's it. Anything else? Good? Like, subscribe, and never, ever, whatever you do, don't leave your house. Yeah, don't leave your house. Ever. <laughs> Stay safe out there, guys. Uh, Pittsburgh Weiss Schwartz signing off. See you all in the next one. See ya.